Music and talk. Music Keeping and talk. everything Music live. You already know. In life, when you love something, when you truly love something, you can you can see it. You can taste it. It's almost like a good plate of food. You know, when you really enjoy cooking something and you just know how to make that, re- that recipe just taste right because you loved it. You love cooking it. it. You know, it came from love. It came from the heart. And when I see this and when I see an artist do what they love and you can see it, you can feel it, you can hear it in the music. I get very, um, it touches something in my heart, you know, because I live my life like that. I truly do. I I really love what I do. I love radio. I've been in radio since I was 18. I'm 35, like I said. And to see the love come through the music for this cat. I'm going to actually pull up a song while I'm talking on the air and, you know, interviewing this guy. But, um, I mean, just the sound of this music is amazing to me. And he plays the keyboard. And he just kills it. No Face Shadowman is sitting right across from me here at Dash Radio and he has a mask, never shows his face ever. And he's got this hair that just, it just, it's long and big and puffy. And I'm amazed by this man sitting across from me while I'm playing this record that he has out there. And what's the name of this record, man? If you could pull that mic up closer to you, brother, because I definitely want to make sure I get good audio on this so I can really hear you. There you go. Yeah, the one year. First of all, thank you for the introduction. That's uh, excuse the headphone feedback. No worries. Yeah, those are great introductions. So thank you for that. First of all, and um, the track you're listening to right now is called Prathesia, and uh, basically is about the sensation that you feel like when your legs fall asleep or your arm falls asleep and someone touches you. Right. That tingly feeling. Right. Yeah, that's what this track is called, Prathesia. You know, how long have you been doing music? Um, music like completely. Yeah, like like just in general, when did you first pick up, you know, an instrument or? Oh, first instrument was a ukulele, and uh, I was a child. A you know, ukulele? Yeah, that was first. Then I went to acoustic guitar, then the bass guitar, then the keyboard and drums. Wow, so you play pretty much a lot of instruments. Then. Everything I need to get my sound across. Okay, now I was, I did my research on you, No Face Shadowman. I really did. I went online, went to YouTube, and I typed you in. And there was something that that I, I thought was cool that you collect. Do you collect like little figures, little? Yeah, anything that's um, I guess unusual or toys. You know, toys. They just things like I have an atomizer from the 1920s. What? An atomizer. There's probably three what's people it? out there that. Are what's going, an oh, atom? Yeah. What's an atomizer? <laughs> There's like three people going. Yeah, I know what that is. An atomizer is what people used to use to spray on cologne. You know, you have to actually pump the little bottle. Okay. It had like a little black balloon on the side of it, and you'd pump that to get the, the atomization of whatever fluid is inside to disperse, thus making the spray on yourself. Wow. So, like that one, I have that from like the 1920s. Well, I brought three toys, not from the 1920s. I'm a 90s kid. I was born in 83, right? You may be older than me. Really? You might be. I've, can I ask your age? <laughs> you can ask anything. How but, old are you? But I won't answer Wow. <laughs> so that's one of those you won't answer? Yeah. I love that. I'm cool with that. Hey, man, I respect everybody, man. But let me say, this is a Ghostbuster toy. If I can flip the head around, there you go. All right, so I brought you three toys today. You ready for the list of toys here? Yes. All right, here's the list of toys. Here we go. The three toys Mike Live grew up with. Number one, Ghostbusters. I don't know if you remember the Ghostbusters, but this Ghostbuster right here was a mailman, and he came to deliver the mail, right? And he would freak you out by And then yeah, things. all of a sudden you open up his belly and he's got yeah. teeth and yeah. and then his his where your where your nipples are turns into eyes. And that's me explaining the scary male ghostbuster, right? Yeah, I knew a girl like that. <laughs> and I got you the second one. Now here's another Ghostbuster scary guy. He's got a really big structure, right? And a small head. And then you flip it over and it's a crazy little monster. Another monster. So you have you have three choices, brother, here. You have, a, you have a theme going with monsters. Here. Yeah, oh, for sure, for sure. Actually, I'm feeling the mailman. Are you feeling the mailman? Yeah. Because, you know, I brought Chuck Norris, too. <laughs> I have a Chuck Norris doll, ladies and gentlemen. A little, small, little action figure. So you get to pick one of these, brother. Which one would you like? I get to pick one to do what? With? To Just with to it. take it. I it's that's my present it. to you. I'm giving you a gift. Wow. I'm going to go with that. Um, 
actually, because of the, <laughs> the notoriety, I'm going to have to go for the Chuck Norris. Though. Chuck Norris, bro. Come on, man. I'm giving you my Chuck Norris, bro. That's, see, because, that's what I'm talking about right there, man. Because you know his name, I think I've heard before. Right, Chuck more Norris. Than, more than mailman. He's like, I might be able to sell this online. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't. I never sell anything. But no, I, no face shadow, man. I also brought you something. I brought you a shirt. No, you didn't. Did you really? Yes. Man, that's so nice of you, bro. And I brought a couple of flattened posters. What? Like, no way. You got? Oh, can you sign those for me? Yes, actually, I will. Oh man, if you could sign those, that would be big. I have something else to sign for you, though. I have one of these. What is that? Actually, hold on, let me see. He really brought me a gift, bro. And see, I brought, see, I'm glad I brought toys, baby. I told my wife, I told my wife, I said, wife, I better bring some something for this man. And yeah, you got that. What is that, bro? So it's in this box. What is that, dude? This man has a box that looks like a really big book, and he opens it up. Oh no way, bro! I have some. You gonna sign me a little something on that? Look at on that. The garage door or something inside, or. Thank you so much, brother. Music and talk with Mike Live. Mike Live. I want to ask you a question, man. Where, where are you born and raised? Raised. Okay, well, I'm adopted, so um, I was raised mostly in California. Um, and I never really say, like, so much where I'm from because I think that this is a very small rock that we're on. <sighs> and part of our problem is saying that you live over there, I live over there, you're from here, I'm from there. We're all from here, you know. And when it goes wrong, it's going to go wrong for everybody all over here. You know, it's not going to be like, well, it's not my neighborhood that's <laughs> point, bursting out into space. Right. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so. Right. But I'm from here. You know, so. California. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Here, I mean, that works. <laughs> California. And that works. Yeah. Hollywood area. Um, I say like um, Los Angeles, you know, that kind of thing. Um, or even the upper desert or San Diego or right. down by the beach. You know, we, we moved around yeah. a little bit. Um, yeah, that's cool. So, so no face shadow, man, you know, you wear a mask. Yeah. Has anyone ever seen you without your mask? You have a few friends who know me, but they don't know I do this. And then the people that I know through this don't really know me. Wow. In fact, my manager, Joel has been with me now for like more than six years and he's never seen, we've never seen each other face to face. Really? Yeah. Joel, how do you feel about that, man? He doesn't like it. He he's curious. He's <laughs> I'm curious. Gonna tell him, I'm going to tell him. He's curious because he actually thought we, I had met this girl. He thought I was going to actually reveal myself to her. And he was like, wait a minute. I've known you for all this time, and you've never you know, never introduced yourself to me. So, But I didn't let the other person know either. So so you live a normal life outside of this music thing. Like You obviously uh, don't wear the mask everywhere you go, right? Um, I, would, I would say a lot. Yes, I actually do. And really? I would not say I have a, a normal life because, I mean, I'm not even sure what, what that is. Hey, what that really looks like, I mean, if that means like get up and go to a job and come back home to a, a lovely wife who's pregnant, I don't have any of that, any of that at all. In fact, um, <clears throat> let's say on any given, on any given week, I probably have zero, <laughs> zero visitors. No one comes to, to where I am. I don't even let anyone know where I am, where I keep my cars because I have cars and motorcycles and stuff. And Oh, do you really? I just, yeah. When I come out of the garage, I already have my helmet on, my gloves are on, my neighbors don't know me. You know, because most of them are newer than I am, right? Wow. So they don't know me. I don't know them. I'm not trying to. I don't really want to. So, you're very, a, so you're very private. If I didn't have to come outside, I wouldn't come outside at all, really, except for to drive the car, you know, or go on somewhere on the motorcycles. Music and talk with Mike Live. Mike Will there be a time, no face shadow, and that you come out and show your face to your fans, to the people that love your music? Um. Possibly my autopsy, I guess. You know, come on. Wow. They can come out and see that if they want to. Or, or if I go out the way I want to go out, there won't be anything to, to do anything about that. I'll just be gone. So I would like to go out in an explosion. would be kind of cool. Really? Yeah, definitely. That's amazing. Because you could fake like you were actually in it. You could actually just go ahead and go back wherever you came from. But uh, right when it explodes and then it, it won't be able to find you, and they'll say, well, I guess. Right. I guess he's up. gone. I guess you blew up. So you do have a social security number, bro. Everybody's supposed to. <laughs> Everyone's supposed to. If you came through those doors. Yeah, right, right. Through those doors. Yeah, you would. I'm amazed, man. No face shadow, man. If you haven't seen this man perform, can they see you perform? Are you performing in the near future, man? Where, where are you at, man? Where can I see you perform, bro? Um, well, let's see. The next show that's coming up actually is in Lancaster in June. In Lancaster? Yeah. 
Okay. So that's going to be a, a hot show, I guess. Nice. Lancaster and then June. And then obviously the new video coming out. Yeah, that's coming out on Memorial Day, right? On Monday? Yeah, Monday. Nice, nice. And then there's some other shows and some other things like that. In fact, your guy that was here, Antonio. Yeah. That um, Booyah show. I don't know if they feel if they filled their quota of entertainers or not, but if they haven't, I would love to be in that show because I've always wanted to do a car show. Well, how about cars. this? How about this? No, I can't take your tickets. No, 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 for real. Oh, good. No, no, no. I'm going to give you two tickets. Okay? Those, those are your tickets. No, 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 no. I'm giving you two tickets because I want to see you there. I want to perform then, there. Well, I want to see you there first and foremost, but take these tickets because I want to see you there with me, and then I'm going to talk to my guy. I'm going to text him and be like, yo, man, can this dude perform or what? Just take the tickets, bro. Trust me. I'm not real good at accepting things like that. Well, you know what? That's too nice. He Look, just gave you these. Yes, bro. You're you're my guy, bro. You came to the show, bro. I appreciate this, man. Well, I mean, after here, we're going to Pink's, but they're not going to give me free hot dogs. He's right. They're not going to give me free hot I heard you have a thing for sugar. Yes. Let's talk about your sugar addiction. Okay. Um, there's not a lot to talk about. I love sugar. If you could, if you could, uh, my relationship, my longest relationship I've ever had in my life is with sugar. <laughs> sugar has been there since I was a baby. It's still here now. We hang out every day. Um, it makes me happy. I leave it on my table tops. Ants don't come because they know that's my sugar. They'll die if they come in. <laughs> they don't come in. But I love um, all types of candies and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, even just sugar cubes. Like, do you just play music or do you do anything like activity sports wise or any of that kind of stuff? Sports, um, not really, not really like sports. I lift weights inside of my, my place, in my house. Nice. Um, and but I don't shoot like basketball and stuff like right, that. Right, no In sport. fact, music is what I actually do because, for example, like I have sound cards and on each sound card right now I have over 600 completely finished tracks, completely finished music. 600 I, joints? 600 on each card, and I have three cards. So one card has over 900 on it, and the keyboard I have over 300. In each keyboard, there's two of those. So I have literally 2,000 tracks easily. There's no question about that. And if I were to set my equipment up, you could actually just scroll through and hit play anywhere you want, and hopefully, and more than likely, it's going to be something that you really like. You know, when you hear a record like this one, how's that make you feel? A record like what one? Like when you hear, like, the Daz Band. Oh, well, they're like the forerunners. I mean, I inherited through the family that adopted me. They had a they had a daughter who's way older than I am, but she gave me her her forty fives, these records and things, and uh, all of her sound stuff. And when I put on headphones and listened to what it was she was listening to, I didn't want to, I didn't want to listen to anything else. It actually, like you said, it touched something inside of me, and I felt like, wow, wait, 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 this is the flavor that I should know. Right. I felt like I already know this flavor. Right. And um, on a ukulele, I started to try to pick out just stuff that was on it. And I switched over to the bass and then found those notes and then learned to play everything that I was listening to. I never thought about writing my own stuff until um, a guy asked me to be in a group with him. And he would play like a keyboard part that was beautiful. And I'm like, play it again. He's like, what did I do? And I'm like, well, whatever you did, just do that again. Right. And he couldn't do it again. <laughs> and that frustrated me beyond belief. <laughs> and so I never wanted to play with anybody else again. I just wanted to learn every instrument so that when I heard something that I liked, I could save it and I could record it. I could keep it. And when I hear Daz Band or Cameo and Ohio yeah. Players, stuff about, like how that. How about some of this right here? Oh, George? Yeah. I mean, it's just. Well, I know that when they walked into the studio, when they were doing that, they must have felt like completely like just on top of the world because that's a very complicated piece of music. Although it sounds like it wouldn't be, but it is. Right. And that's like, you know, it's a, that's art. Like you were talking to the other guy. That's art, but audio art. Man. You know. And you have such a funk background too, man. Like in all your music, like you're so funky with it, you know? And I'm holding something back because I'm, I don't want to make it so funky. You can't, it's, it's over or beyond a listener. Right. There's a place, it's just like with food. For example, like we were talking about pizzas or, or hot dogs or anything like that. Yeah. You can put chili on a hot dog, but some people that have really, really sensitive palate may want just the hot dog, the bun, and cheese. <laughs> right, right. Maybe a little mustard. Maybe that might be too much. They might put ketchup on it. So you have to flavor it kind of like somewhere in the middle. Because mm -hmm. I have a lot of stuff that's way hotter than, I don't mean hotter like as far as sound, but I mean more flavorful yeah. and more complex yeah. than the funk we're listening to. And Parthesia is kind of a hint towards that, um, that video, Parthesia, because it's solo in there. Actually, what an amazing video. Yeah, that solo actually had made a couple people cry that listen to the, just listening to the music. I'm not sure what it touched something inside of them. I bet. Um, 
I bet. And the girl that did the ballet actually, um, they, you know, they did a really great job. In that. She did a great job in this video. Yeah. Yeah, you got to go look this video up. If you haven't checked this man out, No Face Shadowman, go look him up right now on YouTube. You can check out this video. I mean, it's just dope. The way he did this video, especially with the lights and the girl and how she moves on her tippy toes like that and the angles of the shots that you got. I mean, I know yeah. you have, I mean, I could just tell you, you're you you're definitely into that, right? Like you want to see the whole product from your videos and you have a say in all that, right? You don't just let somebody go do your video. Well, it's just me and us. I mean, Joel helping me and me. That's serious. That's how big this company is, you know, so. Um, I love it. And do you have a, a music, like a, an actual, like, a entertainment group or, or, or a record label? or? Um, right now I'm doing everything through Joel because um, you can't put my name on anything because no one knows what my name is, you know. So I have to trust that everything that we do that goes through Joel is safe, you know. So Amazing. I trust Joel because that's who I'm working with and that's who I trust. Amazing. So, you know, he's... So anything that comes in, like when people send whatever they send to us, it goes, Joel grabbed it. Because when we go, even to come here, Joel goes to a certain place, a parking lot, and he parks his car, and then I drive up. He gets out of his car and gets in my car, and then we drive to wherever we're going, like here. Wow. We have to do the reverse of that to leave here, but he goes one way down a freeway, and I go another way. So um, they can't mail me anything. or So it's kind of it's a challenge. <laughs> I'm amazed, man. You wear this mask. You know, and this is like a daily thing for you. I want to ask you, is there a reason why you've you've wanted this life of not to show your face? There could be a couple of reasons. And for most things, there's usually several reasons. It's not just one. Um, let's say a safe response would be this one, I guess. Um, I didn't want my beauty to interfere with the music. There are a lot of artists who, based on how they look, like they walk into the room, they have all this gold and all these swag clothing and stuff and green eyes or whatever, and people are in love with them already right then and there, you know, because they're selling their, their talent based on how they look. But they had nothing to do with their look. That's a gift from God. So I decided, man, to, hold, man of faith, huh? I decided to hold back my beauty <laughs> on, the, on the topical part and just share what's inside, which is funk, mostly. Man. And um, so it's all about the music. It's all about the sound. It's not about what color my eyes are, what size my lips are, how smooth my skin is, how long my hair is. Right. Because my hair is longer than his hair. So, but it's not, you know, it, it's like almost irrelevant. Amazing. As long as we're healthy and viable, then people should love each other. And when there's, when you remove that automatic hate that people have when they first see whoever they see, they're kind of left with love. Right. I, I totally agree with that. Yeah, so. You know, you're, you're a very smart individual, man. I, I must say, I'm, I'm intrigued by you. No face shadow men live in the building here at Dash Hip Hop X. You know, I, I want to thank you. I mean, you brought me some gifts. You signed something for me. Yeah. I, I gave you Chuck Norris. I mean, I don't know. If that, <laughs> and, I, and I returned to you a a large, a small headed construction person, <laughs> which I'm sure is based after something real. And then, and here's a postal worker. The postal, the postal worker, the Ghostbuster right. uh, scary and guy. I have Chuck Norris over here holding my, my sunglasses. You got Chuck Norris. Yeah. Thanks again for coming, man. I know it was easy. I'm just I'm just amazed. Like I said, I'm amazed by your music. Um, before you leave, man, I, I do want to ask you one thing. If there is one thing that you want to do before you decide to blow yourself up that you haven't done yet, what is it? Oh, I would love to walk around and share the cure for cancer with everybody. The sick is first. Adult or child, sick ones first. And everybody else. That'd be cool. That's amazing. It has nothing to do with music unless music frequency wise is, is going to be the thing because as far as cutting people open and taking out things, that's always been risky. But wouldn't it be cool if you could just aim a sound frequency at a cell with, with a certain frequency that's, you know, just for that particular cell and destroy that cell just by sound. <sighs> that would be a, that'd be a cool fix. That'd be a dope movie too. Yeah. You're pretty dope, man. Oh, thank you. I don't use any dope though. I, don't. I can't wait to see this all on the internet, man. We're going to post it all over the place. This interview, and you dropped a new record here exclusively, and I'm proud of you for that, man. Thank you for bringing us. That's, that's awesome. I feel I feel privileged for that. Thank you. I'm surprised you, I'm surprised being so romantic you didn't play one of the slow songs because, you know. That yeah. Been... Well, I mean, we can slow it down for the ladies. I mean, <laughs> I'm, Very I'm, good. I'm already trying to make a baby over here, you know what I'm saying? You already have one. I mean, okay. I got one, yeah. Yeah, and but, so did your other gentleman. So. And, we, and we find out on Tuesday if it's a boy or a girl. Boy or a girl. Oh, you th what are you thinking? Girl. You're thinking girl. Yeah. Wow. Most babies right now that are being born at this time for whatever reason, 
and there's a lot of speculation as to why they seem to be girls. Wow. And it could be because right now is the time just in the whole homo geographical thing of everything that women not only have power or want power, but are also like even wishing to have, you know, daughters. Those vibes. Yeah. I feel that. to be out there for them. I feel that. Yeah. Well, thank you again, man, for coming through. No face shadow, man. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm going on in this interview because I'm just intrigued by you, brother. Yeah. I'm sorry the time is up. Nah, man. We didn't it's get all... political. No, <laughs> nah, yeah. Let's not talk that. I'm don't get me. Into... I'm teasing you. I know. When I get into politics, my wife, she always tells me, don't talk that shit. I just say, fuck yeah, Donald a... Trump. That's all I say. Well, there's, well, that's interesting. But there's never really anything to, as far as like all that stuff is already supposed to happen. Stuff that's going to happen. It's already written. It's going to happen. Yeah. And we have two places we can be a spectator or a participant. Right now, I'm just going to spectate and watch. You know, I think uh, I think YG came out with this album recently, and he made a record called uh, "In the Dark." It's pretty, it's pretty gangster, bro. It's pretty dark, you know. Yeah, I live in the dark. It's not gangster. I think it's gangster. <laughs> no, it's. I this mean, track might be gangster. I sleep in the dark. Yeah, I tell do. my wife all the time, don't don't leave no TV, no lights. I sleep great in the dark. Yeah, and I chill in the dark too. You sleep with any sounds on? No. So no. it's just the sound of whatever the room is and mm -hmm. hotel, you know, apartment or house. Apartment, second floor. So you hear other people then sometimes. Sometimes. Well, the neighbors, they complain about us all the time. I could be getting these text messages at like, you know, like one thirty in the morning. Your cats are making too much. I'm like, motherfucker. Well, I usually I'm sleep, sleeping. believe it or not, I sleep to a film, the same movie over and over again every night. I've probably seen this one movie, wow, thousands of times. <laughs> um, but I sleep to Shadow of a Doubt, Albert Hitchcock. Oh, my gosh. I you, sleep. you are dark over there, huh? Well, you know, I fall asleep before they get to the dark part. When the father comes in and asks his daughter what she's, you know, what the, what the tele, you know, they got a communication. And he asks her what that is. Um, he asks her, how about a kiss? And I usually try to time that kiss and make the kiss sound at the same time without looking at the screen because the screen is black, but the show is on. And if I get the kiss synchronized, right when I go kiss like that, um, <laughs> I'm off to sleep. No face shadow, man. He's off to sleep, man. Thanks for coming once again, you're man. Welcome. Thank you. You're, you're more than welcome to come back. All right, we'll be right back. We're going to get hot. I'm playing. I love it, man. Thanks <laughs> for coming, brother. Thank you. All right. I'm in the dark, 20 past eight. Music and talk with Mike Live. Mike Live. Mike Live. Mike Live.